Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hello, everybody. It is time for the ramble. This little insanity goes on until uh, midnight tonight when uh, Jack Bishop will be here. In the meantime, in between time, let's take a look at, oh, well, let's talk to an old friend. Ladies and gentlemen, we go out to the West Coast. We always go out to the West Coast, whether it's Pearl or whether it's Bubs or whether it's <laughs> Durst or whether it's Snyder. Uh, I'm the only one on the East Coast. Ladies and gentlemen. Yes, you, you, you deserted us all. <laughs> yeah, Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Alex. Ah, uh, yes. Wonderful, Larry. Lawrence, you're terrific. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm dreading. I, I actually had a little throwback uh, the past couple of weeks. I worked the uh, punchline with Bobby Sladen. It was their 40th anniversary at the punchline. Yeah, yeah. And then the uh, following week, Bob Rubin came in. So, and, and played where? He is the punchline too for one night. Oh, oh, really? What are they doing? Bringing yeah. back the oldies but goodies or something? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> they did one night with Bubs. What night of the week? I did, uh, well, I did one night with Bob Rubin, and then uh, I did a couple nights with Bobby, or three, four nights with Bobby the week before. Well, Bobby was the weekend, right? Yeah, Bobby had the whole week. Yeah, but how about, how about, uh, how about Rube? When, when Rube, they, they only trust with one night. So. And what night was that? That was the uh, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. It was the 29th anniversary of the earthquake, so it was uh, oh, appropriate. Okay, okay. but uh, so they, they couldn't give him a weekend, right? No. Oh, boy. Uh, so Maybe that'll change when this big Netflix special comes out. Yeah, they, they, you know, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. You know, uh, uh, I certainly wasn't contacted about that anniversary, you know, so. Mm -hmm. That place. Well, you should have been. Well, I mean, come on, that place was built on my show. You know? Yeah, no lie, that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, so I um, they, so so uh, who else was on the bill at the big? Uh... They had uh, they didn't have a bunch of really old. They had Bobby hosted the show, and they had like seven local comics, and some of them weren't that old. So I don't know why it was just kind of. I think it was kind of thrown together at the last minute. So why why even do an anniversary if you're not going to like know, bring back they, the? They should have done a whole month, I think. If you're not going to bring back the people that made the place, yeah, you know, probably because they didn't want to afford them. You know, they didn't want to have to that pay for That could be it. Live Nation owns it, so who knows? Yeah. So I mean, it, it, it's a question of whether they wanted to pay for the comics that they would have to bring back in order to. You know, do a, 50, a 40th anniversary. You'd have to bring back somebody like Paula Poundstone. You know, you'd have to bring back quite a few people who, uh, mm -hmm. Bob Goldthwait, people who made them famous and helped make them famous. And um, uh, I guess uh, Dana Carvey, uh, you know, but they can't afford those people all at one time. Right. Or they don't want to afford it, or they don't make the kind of money they used to make out of that place. But that seems like. They were doing an anniversary thing on the cheap. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah. And how's Rube doing? How's he feeling? Rube looked great, and uh, he did, had a really good set. We had fun. And yeah, I was in contact with him here a while back, but we never caught up. In other words, I called him, he called me, back and forth, you know, phone tag thing. Well, yeah, well you know. It, nothing's ever easy with Rube. So. Well, Rube is uh, totally unpredictable. Yeah. You know, I mean, and has a will to fail. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he he just doesn't go that extra inch, you know, to to be successful. And I keep trying to give him the, you know, the pep talk, but he doesn't seem to go for the pep talk that much, so. Yeah, he should have been famous by now. Don't oh, you think? he should have been. He should have been a household name. 
you know. But then again, should have so should have Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, anyway, and you were a household name. So. I was a household name, although how soon they forget. You know, I had a, a something happened recently. A guy took over a station in San Francisco. I won't say which one because I don't want to embarrass him. Okay, uh, as program director. And uh, my friend Walter Sabo knows him, and I know that he knows me because he was working the town when I was working the town. So I had him get a hold of the guy, and the guy wrote back a note saying, blah, blah, blah. When Alex was uh, at uh, Live 105, he savaged my radio station, and then he sent over a guy to do some stunt in our lobby, and since then I've had nothing but a bad taste in my mouth. Wow. And I, so I wrote him a letter and I said, listen, I'm sorry if, you know, it was all in the, in the spirit of competition. I don't know what I did. I don't remember it. But I assume that if you do, it's got to be real. And you were obviously bothered by it. And I just want to you know, say I prof profusely apologize for any, any pain I may have brought you. And he wrote back and said, apology accepted. But here is, is the reason why I never worked in San Francisco really again, okay? Is because that town was so petty that they couldn't understand competition. You know, they couldn't understand the spirit of competition. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was suddenly out of work, their attitude should have been, which one of us can scoop him up first? But instead, their attitude was, he was our competitor. Good, I'm glad he's gone. Yeah, you know, I mean, and rather, you know, in, in any other market, they it like, you know, Howard Stern was fired at uh, WNBC here, and immediately Mel Carmazan picked him up for another station because he saw the value in that, and so a lot of people bought my on-air persona as being who I was, and anybody who's in the business shouldn't feel that, and I felt kind of sorry for this guy because here what 30 years later something like that he still holds a grudge for some stunt that was pulled and it was something <laughs> I wonder what it was <laughs> well it was something chuck farnham did this was a guy had we, to be, yeah. we had who went out and did uh, did stunts and things like that and a lot of times we let him just think up what he was going to do and he would go do it so apparently he wound up in the lobby of the station i don't know knowing him naked or slathered yeah. in peanut butter or something like that. And this uh, this rested with this guy for how many years now? So, you know. 30 years, God. I could well have a show in San Francisco right now if it weren't for that. <laughs> you know, it's really, <laughs> really just bizarre, you know, that so long ago. I mean, I felt bad because he shouldn't have felt bad about this. This was all, mm -hmm. you know, in the spirit of healthy competition. And uh, in my his note back to me, he kind of admitted that he said, "Yeah, those were competitive times, you know." So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I'm I'm sorry if you bought the act, you know. I'm, I'm uh, you know, because I'm a delight to work with, you know. So you are, and once again, proving San Francisco is a small town. Oh, it, it, well, I don't know if it is now. Now it's not anything like it once was. But then again, neither is radio, so it, it doesn't really matter, you know. Uh, I mean, there really is very little radio out there. So, anyway, the one shot I might have had getting back on the air in San Francisco, they blown. That would have been great, you know. But what the hell? What can I do? You know. Plus, you know, once they take a look at me, look how old I am. They 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 turn a blind eye to the whole thing. Oh, we need a younger guy in here. Bah, 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 bah. You know, even though this guy is no spring chicken himself. You know, if he was around when I was around there. Uh, so, you know, it's it just, uh, it, it doesn't get any easier. So I've got this little podcast. Whoopie doo. Everybody's got a fucking podcast. You know, Bub Bubbles, you, we should. Which you invented. Yes, I did invent it, but nobody remembers that. You know, I've actually looked it up trying to figure out when. It wasn't that I, I let me put it this way. I didn't call it a podcast. What it was, remember I was out of work once, it was the time between, I think, but well, no, no, it was the time after I got fired by Live 105, so I decided to put up a website, 
and and do a daily kind of 15 minute 20 minute program which i would just you know blab about stuff and so on and so forth and um or maybe I'd sometimes have a guest in there or whatever. I don't know if I ever did it with you. I know we did the TV thing for Play TV, but anyway. Right. And this guy I knew who was a techie said, listen, I've written a program for you. And I even have the, still have a copy of the program. It was called Auto Alex. And what it was, I would do the 15-minute show, 20-minute show. And then this program, if people put it on their computer every day would look to see if there was a new episode. And if there was a new episode, it would then download it to their computer so that when they came home, there was Alex Bennett's latest episode. Mm -hmm. What does that sound like? That's a podcast. Yeah, it's a podcast. That's iTunes. Um, we literally invented it. And I went back to look and see if anybody else had done anything like that. And... Uh, I, was there anybody doing daily programming? No, I don't remember that exactly, okay? Because when we wound up doing uh, 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 Play TV, which was the first daily 12-hour-a-day television network on the Internet, um, that had never been done before. So my podcast had to be, if, if not, we invented the format of getting the delivering the program to your computer. I don't know if it was in fact the first what you could call podcast. There may have been somebody else doing something too, but they didn't find a method of delivery like we did. No. So, yeah, uh, God, if you could have patented that, you'd be a, a zillionaire. Well, you know, I've often thought about getting a lawyer and seeing if there's anything we can do about it. You know, Maybe because you we should. did we did come up with the uh, this guy and I did come up with the form. Are you yeah. still in touch with him? Uh, I, if, if, that that's another story. Yes, I am, but I'm not. Uh, I I don't want to go into it here, but he he doesn't have a problem with me. He has a problem with somebody I know. Therefore, he can't talk to me. Oh, okay. So you know, it it was it it's but it but it was a you know we we I invented. I he invented the podcast actually if you know he's the guy who came up with this program I came up with doing the show he came up with the way of delivering it and together we had this this thing going and it was terrific you know yeah that and the play tv was god so far ahead of its time yeah yeah well, every day we did a full blown tv show and uh if that guy that uh, play hadn't died, he Paul Montgomery. Yeah, he was my died so young. He was my best friend at the time, and uh, he dropped dead. This was a guy, you know. Uh, I've always waited in my lifetime to find somebody who so believed in me he was going to let me live out my dreams. And this is exactly what Paul did for me. He said. Uh, you want to start a play like network or something? We started out doing audio and broadcasting it live every night. And then we took all those shows and using a piece of equipment which this company invented called the Trinity, which was a uh, broad t television studio in a box, big box, but a, in a box. Uh, we managed to do... Uh, uh, convert all the shows to TV. Even the guy in Canada that we had was converted to TV. And uh, they went up and installed one up in there, in his uh, neck of the woods. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. So we had 12 hours a day worth of programming. About three show, two, three shows were coming out of Sacramento. Mine was coming out of San Francisco. There was a guy coming out of the East Bay and a guy coming out of Canada. And uh, we did live television. Uh, and uh, that lasted, un you know, and... and this was under my guidance, you know, that I started it. And Paul said, go ahead and do it. Here's the equipment. Um, what do you need to promote it? Blah, blah, blah. He paid me a very nice salary uh, to run this thing. Uh, they paid everybody who did shows there a very nice salary. They were very, very giving. Okay. And so here was a guy who was willing to pay for my dreams to come true. And uh, all of a sudden, one day we get a call. Uh, Paul had a heart attack last night and died. 
And I'm going, what? I mean, the guy was only 39. Jesus. You know, and I went, gee, that's amazing. Well, had he lived, this you'd have been running a huge network now. Uh, it, it could have been. Either that or shortly after that came the uh, the downfall of the uh, uh, the Internet. Uh, you remember all those internet companies started going belly up, and so did Play. They all crashed around 2000, yeah. So did but. Play Incorporated. So who knows? We may have been caught in the middle of all of that and gone out of business. But, or if you'd have hung around, you'd have been huge, or somebody would have bought you out for a billion dollars. Yeah, something like that. But, it, you know, it, it, was, uh, it was quite a, quite a deal, you know, of what we were doing. And well ahead of our time. And, oh yeah, uh, I just you know I I just feel bad that I we never went out and copy wrote this program because to this day we could then go to somebody like Apple and say guess how much money you owe us because you took well, maybe the you very could. you you took the very idea and the essence of the program that we created that was created for us uh, and and uh, turned it into iTunes. Because iTunes, you like a program, a particular podcast, you subscribe to it, and every day you come down to you go home to your computer, and there's the program downloaded or available yeah. to you. You need to talk to a lawyer about this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So wouldn't that be, be so funny if you like <laughs> want a judgment against these companies? Well, you know, the only problem is Apple's got you know Boku lawyers. But uh, I have a co as I say, I still have a copy of Auto Alex, and I have the uh, I think the date on it when it was created. We know when it was created. It was created in, uh, I believe it was 1998. Okay. Um, uh, or nine? Well, 19, I think 1998 may be the end of 97. All right. So that. I defy anybody to come up with another program that did that or another form of delivery at that point. I mean, iTunes was still years away. Um, and so I am very proud of that, you know, but nobody nobody makes at it. At that better. time, most people are just using their computers to get email. Uh, yes, yes. If that... If everything was so slow then. Yeah, I mean, if that... Uh, if, well, that... That was our biggest problem with the TV network, is the only people who could pick us up were the people, we, we sent it out in two, ver, two, two uh, bandwidths. One very low, so the picture was fuzzy and not particularly great. It was like watching early TV, you know, before they built the big sets, they had the little three inch screens and people would, mm -hmm. oh, isn't that amazing? Uh, but then we also had a high speed, uh, uh, feed and uh, that one if you had to have like uh, ISDN in your home or something that was a faster pipe than just the dial up uh, that was our biggest problem was the delivery system also in those days if you used if you were at home and you used that bandwidth it was very expensive you know and it was a, a very expensive process to put out we had to have uh, a very fast pipe going out of our studio so that we could serve both these these different uh, bandwidths so it, you know it was today it's simple i go on i uh go to youtube uh i turn the show on and we got ourselves a live tv show and what is it costing me zero that's great so you know i have to pay for the the bandwidth i have to pay for the uh, uh pipe I have to pay for the uh, fiber here, but that that fiber is only you know costing me maybe sixty bucks a month. So you know, you're, it's really, really. I know I'm talking about stuff you don't know about, but you know. Do you know what? Band no, it's, it, it's interesting. This is like you. This is the dawn of the uh, changeover from TV to the yeah. internet. But nobody has ever said, "Hey, Alex Bennett came up with the first uh, delivery system that was basically a podcast." Just like, okay, the porno people, like uh, uh, ABN, uh, has never said, oh, let's give Alex Bennett an award. Now, what would you say they would give me an award for in porn? Uh, Midnight Blue? 
Well, not really. Midnight Blue, certainly I should be patted on the back for that. It opened up, it was the pep, uh, someone once described it, the pet cock of permissiveness. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I came up with the first hardcore video presentation on videotape. In other words, I, I, I produced the entire thing in vid, on videotape as opposed to filming it, which everything else was at that time. And we did a thing called Midnight Blue Uncensored. And to my knowledge, it was the first hardcore um, um, thing ever done on video. Now all of it is video because all of a sudden people saw how cheaply I produced that and they suddenly went, we better do the same thing. And all of a sudden they were starting to produce stuff on video. As opposed to film. So, really? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so, folks, uh, AVN, where's your where's your honor for me? You know, having been the first to do that, I had two major firsts. Uh, I that first, I feel guilty about. I feel guilty about it not because we were doing porn. I only did one porn tape, but uh, uh, not because we were doing porn but because it opened up the, uh, again, the petcock of permissiveness to do things cheaply mm -hmm. in porn. Where before it, it, they made a movie, it cost them at least $10,000, $12,000 to do it on film. Where with videotape, it cost you $1.50. Exactly. <laughs> and so everything got cheap and everybody was doing it. And, you know, so uh, that's what I feel guilty about that I ruined the porn industry by doing that. You I'll, cost them jobs. <laughs> yeah, right. But no, because I, well, what happened was we wanted to do this thing called Midnight Blue Uncensored, and I went, we went to a distributor who distributed video, and he said, well, you know, how much is it going to cost us, Ten grand or something like that? And I said, no, it's going to cost you $300 so we can pay the models. And he went, what? I said, yeah, we'll deliver a complete hour and a half video presentation for 300 bucks so he said okay here's the 300 bucks and we went out and we made the damn thing and he, we came back to him and he was amazed he was just absolutely gobsmacked and said fine then all of a sudden he started having other people do stuff on video and before you know it you know, the whole industry is nothing but video. If you look at porn today, they, I don't know if anybody's doing porn film. <laughs> <I'd be> retro. <laughs> you know, so uh, that that's the uh, no, nobody nobody makes a porn film for ten thousand dollars. You know, they make loops and things like that. Anyway, so that's the other thing I should. Uh, uh, well, coulda, shoulda, woulda. I'm close to Gotta the Gotta get your credits for this. I'm close for the end of, close to the end of my life and nobody gives a shit about what I contributed to the industry. So <laughs> you know. As for radio, I guess I, I invented a few things there, one thing there. And that was the kind of show we did in the morning in San Francisco with a live studio audience and comedians. Up until that point, morning shows just had uh, morning show hosts who thought they were funny. You know. Yeah, I never. Uh, I don't know anyone ever did a, a show within a live audience, At, or had nothing but comics on. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and all of a sudden across the country, these things started to happen. All these programs with comics on. Nobody did a live studio audience. Nobody saw the value in that. I saw the value in it because if Larry Bubbles Brown comes in one morning and he's expected to be funny and there's no audience, he doesn't know how to work exactly. Yeah, you don't know if it's funny or how it's playing out there, but when you get the audience laughing, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, And it just puts so much energy into the show, too, having the people there. And yeah. It's great. And some days we'd have four people, and sometimes we'd have hundreds waiting outside the door to come in. You know? Well, when we had, uh, yeah, when you got Jackie Chan and uh, Tori Amos on the same show. On the same show, I think there were maybe a thousand people waiting outside the radio station to oh, come people, in. Oh, people! I can't. People were offering us money to get in. And, you know. <laughs> oh boy! Isn't that one? I, I have no tickets to scalp. I can't help you. Uh, yeah, I don't have uh, any tickets. Yeah, we could, we scalpers could have made a fortune off of that. Yeah. Plus, didn't cost anything to get in. Um, but that uh, was crazy. Yeah, that was whole. 
The yeah. whole building was filled with people. And all, all we could hold was something like maybe 50 people, uh, maybe 100 people, uh, be, because there were a lot of people standing up and stuff. But, yeah. I mean, it, it was. A few seats, and then people could stand. And... Yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing. I mean, they never turned out like that for anything else. You know. Hey, you know what? I just looked at the clock. 25, Time flies. 25 minutes have flown by. Are you playing anywhere soon that people could see you? No, I, I, got the rest, I got the rest of the month off. I think I want the Throgmorton next week. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you get a chance and you live in the Bay Area, Larry Bubbles Brown is a good bet. He's a Catch good... Catch him before he dies. As they say about some women we used to know, he's a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Bye, Larry. Bye, Alex. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, everybody. How are you? Hello there. I'm sorry that for about a half hour there, I didn't have Larry's uh, picture up. Uh, but uh, we, uh, we uh, let's do those things. I'm checking something here. Is that okay? No, that's not all right. Hmm. I, I'm having a problem tonight. Oh, boy. Uh, well, wait a minute. Hold on a second, folks. I'm going over. I have to go check something else out here. Uh, uh, hmm. Hmm. Hold on a second. Options. Uh, uh, remove from dock. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what that is. It, it doesn't, uh, doesn't seem to work. Nothing seems to work here. I'm all frozen up on my other machine. Oh, boy. Son of a bitch. Oh, fuck. Oh, I just, I give up on all of it. Um, hmm. Let me see here. Uh, wait a minute, hold on a second, folks. I gotta do something here. I'm, I'm trying to fix a problem. But it uh, doesn't uh, doesn't work that well. Uh, I can find her. Uh, oh, okay, we're fine now. Okay, we're fine now. All righty, hold on, folks. We're fine. Ah, oh, boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> I just, you know, it's always that I'm winding up fixing stuff, and uh, uh, I tried to fix something while we were doing that interview while that was on. And uh, I had to, I had to take care of it. Okay, so it's all taken care of now. So I'm, uh, I'm hoping that we're all right. Uh, thank you for indulging me while I was looking at something to try and fix it, but it's fixed now. And uh, I, uh, I should never start fooling around with stuff before I go on the air, because if I don't fix it, I go crazy. I go nuts. It's just weird. It's very strange. Anyway, let me open up the lines. Skype lines are open if you want to call me. Uh, and uh, uh, whatever. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I, went, I just got a thing here. Tonight I saw a thing on TV and it said there was a thing called RoboKiller, which is this, this app that you can get for your phone that will like intercept all uh, robocalls, all right? And in fact, if they are uh, there, they'll get a message from you uh, and you won't, even get the, you won't even get the phone call. So we're gonna see how good it works, right? So I try signing up for it and it won't sign up and it won't sign up and it won't sign up and then it signs up and it finally says, great news, RoboKiller is back up. If you experience delays activating your phone number, the issue's been resolved, please reopen the app. And you go, oh, wait a minute. If you're so f so fucked up, why should I even have anything to do with you? You know, look who's the first out of the uh, out of the uh, out of the out of the what do we call it? Starting uh, gate. Starting gate. Oh, you're you're dressed up for Halloween, are you? All right. Can you see? Because I I don't know what's it, going it, on. Is that the oh, is that the extent of your Halloween costume? Those pair of ears. Uh, do you see the T-shirt? <laughs> no, you got to stand up, I guess, or something. I feel, I feel like you know, Marjorie. 
because she has the t-shirt. Well, uh, I don't see the t-shirt yet. Oh, ghouls just want to have fun. Okay, you can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I had a pumpkin one too. I didn't know what to do. You had a pumpkin one too. Yeah, it was like orange with like you know jack o' lantern on it. Wow. Son and of then a I bitch. was mad because everybody had skulls, like leggings and things, and you know. Yeah. I uh, I'm dressed up as a talk show host tonight, so right, right. I it's the costume I go with every year. It's it seems to work. You I know, know. I'm ready for Halloween. I used to say, you know, every day. Well, all year round. you know, I I have uh, come up with a philosophy, and it's basically this in a nutshell: fuck the kids. Right now, the reason I say that is every year Marjorie goes out and buys like five bags of candy. Mm-hmm. Do you know how many kids came to our door tonight? Three. Goose egg. Uh, Zero. Do you know how many came to our door last year? How many? Goose egg. (laughs) Why she goes out and buys, you know, five bags of candy is beyond me. Before Phil gets here and filibusters. Well, here here um, is is Phil. Here's Phil. That's his new name. Phil a buster. Right. Yeah. Listen, did you just see that there's a mandarin duck in the uh, Central Park in the pond? Do you ever see ducks or you don't go to that? I don't go over there. Oh, but there's like a Chinese mandarin duck and they don't know how it got there. It was on all the news tonight, you know. Oh, I didn't. I didn't see that. Escaped from a restaurant. All they know. All I know is they found two dead bodies in the River of Sisters. And yes, they were duct taped together, They're and Saudi girls, and, they, right? and Saudi girls. They were gorgeous, yeah. by the way. And it looks like they committed suicide. Oh my God, this is horrible. I'm telling you, anymore. I was so surprised, and I thank you know. I'm so glad yeah. that Halloween didn't get ruined forever. Yeah. And Alex, you know, last night I had heard that Rose. There was a woman named Rose. Mm-hmm. She was a Holocaust survivor, and this asshole killed her. And you know what you said last night, like. I didn't realize it was the biggest anti-Semitic, but the biggest anti-Semitic in, in history, except for the Holocaust, when he said that. Yeah, yeah. And that is going to be like a monument now, like a shrine yeah. or something. That's important. In, like, in this country, country yeah. I mean, this is uh, this kind of thing has been going on in Israel for many, many years. Oh, it has? So, true, but it wasn't helped in any way, shape, or form when some jackass moved the embassy. Yeah. Right. Oh, and, and people are. I'm so afraid. Sh- you know what? Yeah, yeah. And secondly, let me let me add that when you talk about that, you're talking about a war that's going on between two warring sides. You're not talking about some idiot who goes into a church with a gun, a into a synagogue terrorist. with a gun. You know. uh, this kind of uh, anti-Semitism has been. It has uh, not. Surfacing how can you be? Years. How can? How can? Europe, how can a Palestinian? Be anti-Semitic. Will you tell me, Phil? Uh, well, that, that's a tough one. Uh, they just hate. But uh, Oh, I Europe, see. Okay, but they can't be anti-Semitic because they, in fact, they are, are Semitic. Semitic. Yeah. Uh, in in Europe. Here we go. Uh, We're off to the races. We can't have some pleasant conversation on Halloween. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. Phil just has yeah. to do it right out of the out of the shoot. Yeah, so. uh, talking about out of the shoot is your. Is, am I having a problem with YouTube, or is your? Is there no streaming tonight? Uh, there's uh, no streaming uh, tonight. It's just Phil. there. Of course there is. I can see it on two different monitors. Really? I saw it. Yes. I saw bubble. Well, bub, you. That's not. Yeah, I heard bubbles. Yeah. If you look in so, back of me, Phil, you can actually see that there's... Oh, no, I have it now. Oh, yeah. look, you got... Yeah, yeah nice bumper sticker. Make Brian. America smart again, impeach Trump. Uh, there's Brian. Yeah, this, this is the screensaver Rob talked about, so tomorrow I might review it because I just got it today. Yeah, I don't want to take a chance on it because I'm afraid what? if you fuck up, you know, <laughs> you can't get it off. We'll see. Yeah. Black oh, ice phone. liquid. Yeah. yeah. Can you smoke it? N- no. No. By the way, uh, remind me. Um, uh, oh, what? What? Where you keep going on and off? Yeah, I saw that somebody keeps bouncing around. What happened to Bernie uh, now? That's uh, that's uh, uh, the voice code guy. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. yeah. 
Vernon, right? That's Morse, Vernon. Morse code guy. Because I yeah. wanted because Vernon did send me something Vern. the other night that the other day that I was going to read last night, and I'm glad he called tonight because we can talk about it. But he seems to be having some kind of problem staying. I'll fix it in a minute. Staying. He's there. coming back. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I think he's coming back. Oh, why? You think he went somewhere? Yeah, yeah. Ver Vernon, you haven't away from his desk. You having problems, Vernon? Love your ears. Yeah, I'm on vacation. I'm on vacation. Oh. Oh, where are where are you, Vernon? I'm near Mount Jackson, Virginia, so not too far from where Rob lives. Uh huh. And are you sending us video? Yeah, but I think the bandwidth is pretty poor in this condo. No, I see. Oh, well, that could be the it could be the the, the problem. Yeah. When, whenever somebody says they're on vacation, it makes me think of that uh, Sonny Bono quote when he was the mayor of Palm Springs. He used to say, yeah. "They come on vacation, they leave on probation." Yeah, I can, I can, I, we can see you now, Vernon. Yeah. So, oh, good. Yeah, yeah. So you're you're on vacation. So the first thing you do is call us. I see. Okay, that's relaxation. I actually, I've been here a week. Oh, really? In Virginia for a week. You sent me this uh, this this thing, and if you don't believe I have it, there it is. Anything? What did he send you? Uh, just uh, some stuff about. Uh, I just watched the ramble from Friday to 20, 1026 and wanted to respond to Brian's suggestion regarding only counting uh, counties in the presidential election. Of the yes. eleven hundred counties in this country, a super majority are rural. And Republican. I there's 300, Wait a minute. And Republican, and I doubt that the outcome would differ from the gerrymandered districts we now have. Plus, constitutional amendment would be required to change uh, away from the electoral college system. Yeah. There's 3,007 counties in the uh, in 48 of the 50 states. There's 64 parishes in Louisiana. And there are nineteen. Un, there are nineteen organized uh, boroughs in Alaska. One unorganized borough in Alaska, which brings it to three thousand eight and ninety something. But here, here's but what. But nevertheless, yeah. what he's saying, yeah, it would be. Uh, there would be a constitutional amendment needed. Yeah. I understand. And he that. says. He and, says. Also uh, says. He also says, Brian, that contrary to his assertion that the popular vote is bad, if not worse. This country was founded on the premise of one man, one vote, which implies a majority popular vote. The Electoral College was, added, to, ad, was added at the time to get the Constitution ratified by the original uh, states. What happened there was, is the reason the Electoral College was created is because the time it took to get somebody, a representative, to go to Washington to say how his state voted took uh, uh, the, the reason we don't have an electoral college till January is it took from November to January sometimes to get from the furthest state to wow. Washington, D.C. That part could be changed. Yeah, it, and it, and Alex, so therefore, wait, let me finish, let me finish. Right. And so therefore, they created the electoral uh, system as also, a method. Before you opine, Phil, I want to talk to Alex when he's done speaking. Can I finish with what I'm saying? Yeah, you can. Uh, I just want to fill that. Yeah. Uh, uh, so what they did is they created this this electoral college as a method of doing that, so that when a guy came in from you know Maine, they say, okay, well Maine has a certain amount of of of, uh, of electoral votes and and so on, and that was a way of counting it at a time. Today we don't have to do it. We don't need that lead time because we know the night of the election practically who won. You know, I mean, we have all uh, just sending some guy to Washington as an elector. And by the way, he is not bound to vote the way that his state voted. He can as vote. As was ordained in the original construct of the Constitution. Right. One. Two, if we could only if we only had the popular vote to rely on that night of the election, number one, why is the uh, counting of the votes in the in, on election night so disorganized, so disheveled, and so well? It, but but you've got to admit, you've got to admit, within a very short time, say a week, you've got a pretty accurate count. Oh, I, I, I'm not debating uh, taking until January to get electoral votes. I think that's absurd as well. Yeah. Number three, um, like. 
what I just said. But what you're voting for, when you vote, when you vote in your state, what you're voting for is an elector. You're not voting for the president. You're voting voting for an elector and a gerrymandered (laughs) political district that's uh, misrepresented by some corrupt congressman. (laughs) Number three. Yeah, yeah, I'm serious. I know. I know what that guy's saying. He's saying, but he's also whining about the... Oh, you have to, you have a majority Republican counties. Well, here's what here's the, here's the thing, well, Democrats. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 the, the guy you're talking party, about, the guy you're talking about, Brian, is right next to you. It's it's, it's uh, Vern. Vernon, who wrote that well, letter. Well, I'm sorry, whatever. But nevertheless, okay. you got to get to work and convince those counties, baby. You got to get to work and do the legwork. Now, sell the on, uh, sell now oh, okay, let let Vernon let Vernon say something, Brian. Yes, Vernon. Continue on, Alex. Continue on with what I wrote you. Uh, okay, hold on a second. Uh, 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 uh. I actually it printed out very badly. I have to get a new printer. <laughs> the Just constitutional the FBI, amendment in its current political environment is impossible. It would have to pass the uh, two-thirds of the both of the House and Senate, so yep. you would have to change all that. I subscribe to the MPBIC concept, which is a national popular vote interstate compact. The Constitution right now allows every state to decide how they will select their electoral college. That's what I said, participants. No constitutional amendment is required uh, for every state to pass uh, this law within their jurisdiction. Okay. And the I think they have winner how many the small popular vote would be seven. the fifty states. District of Columbia shall receive uh, all electoral college blah 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 blah. Okay. I thought it was thirty percent Huh? Of that I thought it was, Renee with to answer Renee's question. I thought it was like in the thirty percent there's already thirty percent. And I'm throwing counties out there as just a hypothetical. Yeah. I'm not saying that look well, you trust to be the county No, I'm not. I'm just saying the the, the way the electoral call it, Number one, we need an electoral college. No, we need. No, we don't. We don't need it. No, we do but not need, we need it. it no, we, we, don't we don't need, need it. it. No, no, we, we don't no, need it. We don't need it at all. I. What we Period. need is. I, I am. I. I am leery about uh, that. I. I want one man, one vote. One woman, Very one good. vote. You know. That, one see, transgender, was... one vote. You know. <laughs> then Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, Dallas gets precedent. Vernon. Over Vernon's got place. his hand up. If you notice, Vernon. Yes. Vernon? Vernon's having some trouble. Okay. I think he's, uh, Internet with his, 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 what, I continue, what I continued on with, you're not hearing me? You're, you're, kind of, you're, you're, you're breaking up, but just keep going. Keep going. Okay. You know what I would suggest? Okay. Turn, off your, turn, turn, turn off your camera. Turn off your camera, and you'll probably get, a, get better sound. Better bandwidth. Yeah. Or call, maybe. Yeah, just turn Nintendo's. off your camera. Yeah. There, there we go. Now talk. Okay. You see, that's much okay. better. Are you there? Now he lost him. Yeah, you can hear me. Yeah, can we you hear me better. A little, yeah. little bit. Go ahead. Okay, I'll let you see my little doggy. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you should try the phone. What? Yeah. Why, why don't you call us just using the phone? Yeah, this is. Is it still breaking up? Yeah, you're breaking oh, yeah. up. Why don't you yeah, just you... use a phone? And call us on the number that we have. Three four seven three five two zero zero seven nine. That's four seven three five two zero zero seven nine. By the way, Vernon, I didn't mean to take that kind of tone. I thought it was just somebody from the outside just, you know, sniping at me. Ah, well be careful what you be careful how you snipe. No offense taken. Uh, No offense taken. Yeah. Um but uh anyway, um Phil, you had something you wanted to say? No, you had no, your hand up. Yeah. Well, I did. Uh, I had a question. Yeah, Renee had her hand up. Go ahead. Go well, ahead, Renee. Yeah. So we are guaranteed one vote, one person, correct? No. It's a representative uh, uh, government. Uh, or you're, so we had to have, they, in, they placed in the electoral college, and we don't really get one vote, one person. We just have to deal with the electoral college. So there's no way to get rid of the electoral college and still get keep our votes. Well, the majority yeah. who vote in that state uh, get the delegates that go and place those delegates uh, at the convention. What and what amendment is the uh, electoral college? I don't. It's not an amendment, is it? 
No, 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 I, no, I think it is. I think it is specified for in the Constitution. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can anybody see? I have my hand up. Yeah. Because I can't no. see myself. It's in you one know, of the sections. Why don't Why don't they teach this in civics? Like I I remember learning about it, but they yeah, didn't it was really a long time break ago. it down. So, like, you know, that's what most people don't even know any of this. Like, yeah, it's maybe been, that's been a long time. time. No, they don't. Oh. Yeah, Vernon's you know, back. I <laughs> want one man, one vote. Because after yep. Al Gore, I'm sick of it. Like yep. it happened again with Hillary. Is it going to happen a third time, a fourth yep. time? I want one man. Past? I think that it's been discussed here before that it, it happened in the past. Uh, once. Uh, by the way, I want one man, two votes. R Renee, uh, move your camera a little bit so we can see your whole face. We don't. We're. You, you, oh, sorry. You, yeah. Messing around a little bit. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Better. Uh, uh, better. Yeah, you know, of. be nice to get your chin in, but you know. That's the Sorry. Mussolini look. <laughs> yeah, yeah. By the way, tomorrow night is the first night that uh, uh, Skype Part is not. Is, wait, wait a minute. That Skype's going to be. Uh, 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 tomorrow. Uh, yeah, that they're discontinuing. Oh, it's the first of November. Yeah. Seven. So uh, Skype seven, which we use, and we're going to continue to use because supposedly that it will still keep operating. They just won't be uh, servicing it. As you eloquently put it, Alex, eight point fuck. I was eight, laughing eight so Eight point hard fuck, yeah. yeah. I like that too, Alex. <laughs> I got screwed out of the old Skype. Uh, when oh, yeah. I went to Mojave, uh, I lost it. You can get there it. You can get it back. Electoral College. Article you can get it back. Just go online, say uh, Skype 7.0, oh, and seven it'll take you to any number of sites that will allow you to download 7.0. And in the 12th Amendment. But hey, what makes uh, you think they're not going to just turn it off? Uh, because they, they, from what they say, they're not going to. The, the, the story is that what they're saying is we will no longer support it after yeah, well, the first. You're not losing much. You know. Uh, okay, but I, I say they dent in the product by December 1st. No, I, I think they will, it may dent in the product sometime next year. Okay. Uh, uh, I just wish article. somebody would come up with a with an answer to the. Uh, so article two. Uh, uh, hold on a second. Three. Let me yeah. let me get these people on here. Here's Patrick and, and Tony. Placed the process of article. Well, hi Patrick. Two. Section one, clause three. Back to the electoral college. Yeah. Uh, mm. I believe to ch to make a constitutional amendment, don't don't you have to have two thirds of the state ratify? Mm -hmm. and yeah, three fourths. It's three, uh, three fourths. fourths. Okay. Three fourths. So therefore, they'd have to get three fourths of the states, and many of those states are small states that wouldn't have the representation if they did ratify it. So I doubt that it would pass. Uh, Wait a minute. I know how you can do it, Phil. I know exactly how you can do it. So see, uh, no, take according to California no. and New York and make them one country. Can I say? Not maybe. I mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, here's my suggestion. Uh, since Donald Trump feels he can do away with constitutional amendments with a the wave of a pen by doing a uh, um, uh, you know a uh, what do you call it? They call yeah, executive uh, uh, executive uh, order. Uh, uh, you know he he seems to think he can bypass the Constitution and constitutional amendments by doing that. So why don't we have him do it? You know you know why he can do that. Because he's the president and you're not. Yes, and because he's in. He doesn't believe in be, facts. Because he doesn't know what he what his job entails and what it doesn't. Yeah, I think yeah. he's doing a good job. Yeah, yeah, right. He 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 he's he he wants to pass something that's in the Constitution yeah. that he can't change. Yeah, but if he if he talks about it now, just before the election, it's going to bring out a lot of voters. It's oh yes, yeah. oh up sure, sure. It, well, you election. know what it shows? It shows his stupidity. It it may show his stupidity, but it shows that he can get elected and he can get his Phil, people. Phil, how do you feel about being lump, lumped in with a bunch of morons? How do you like that? I don't that? think that they're morons. The people I who think, no, the people who think Trump is good are morons. Oh, Pure yeah, and simple. Some red meat. Unless this time. Red meat. They're they're, red they're, meat. they're 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 morons and mouth breeders, you know. Yeah, it's mouth breathers or she's a breeder. Oh, I said mouth. Did I say mouth breeder? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. okay. Anyway, he's a mouth. Hey, I'm from New York. He's a mouth breeder. Uh, I think Brian's the only one that is a mouth breeder. <laughs> so. Yes. So I have a question. I wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, yes, Renee, and then I want to ask uh, Patrick to say Renee. something. 
Okay, Jones so Vern, you, what is the name of the 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 amendment that some of the states have already passed, and they all agree that they can override their electoral college vote or something ERA? like that? What is, was it it's the ERA? Not, it's not. A, no, it's not an amendment. What it is is each state has the right to pass a law within their own jurisdiction as to how they will send representatives to the Electoral College. Now, the NPVIC means that if you pass it in your state, you're going to elect people to the Electoral College based on the popular vote of all 50 states and the District of Columbia. Whoever wins that, that's who you're going to send. Oh. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's it's in other words, it's determined by other states. It's uh, are you there, Vernon? Vernon, it, other it it's uh, other states, right? In other words, it looks at the total vote and says they will then send these many people. See, the thing is about the electoral right. college, is we don't send a proportion. It's it's either it's winner take all. In other words, if a state goes for Trump, I mean, it could have gone for Trump by 10 votes. All the electoral votes go to Trump, rather than saying, well, we're going to apportion our electoral votes out in the proportion in which the vote came out. This, this sounds like sour grapes. If your guy won... And no, got the, no, uh, no, Phil. Phil, I was. I, I've, been I've been saying this. Loser, I've been saying loser. this. I've been. I've been saying this for forty. I've been saying this for. I've been. I've been saying this for forty goddamn years, Phil. Yeah, and it, it, whether it was a Democrat or whether it was a Republican, the whole thing never made sense to me. It's an, It's antiquated. You know. We either have one vote, one person, or we don't. And right now, no. we do not. Do you know what they should do with the electoral college? I thought about it. Got it. Instead of making New York and L.A. then, they want to keep it in play. They should have all this, just take the, each state should have the same amount of electoral points. Why? Well, I mean, if you want to make it balanced. No. Guess, Why do you want to balance it? Well, you, he you he want to take want it balanced. No, he wants it no, unfair. No, 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 I don't want it unfair. Want it what I'm saying is, I'm why should why should a state that's got a population of 500,000. Why give LA and what? Will you hundred. listen to me, Tony? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Why would you why would you want it? Why would you want a state like Nevada, which has maybe what, 750,000 people, a million people? To have just as many votes as a state like California that's got millions upon millions upon millions of people? How's that representative? I know. I'm just trying to make it a little balanced. No, that isn't balanced. How you make the thing balanced is you count up the votes and you say this guy won. What? He wants Hitler. (laughs) This this is the problem. Throw away the whole thing and just make the vote. I don't want California and New York having more representation than Pennsylvania or or West Virginia. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I can see why people may get upset about that. I don't want it, Alex. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna stand for it. Just one vote, one person, and then we don't have to. What is wrong with one vote, one person? Yes, we do. I can live with that. No, we don't. If it was just one vote, one person, like then Renee, none of this shit, this whole conversation right. would never yeah, happen. She's right, Renee. I can see what Renee's saying. Throw away the whole thing. You vote, and that's who you want, and whoever has the most wins. Now, having Election Day extend to Election Month, having the elections okay. monitored by an independent, nonpartisan, possibly sure. by the United Nations or something sure. of that sort. Right. The Iraqi. Yes. Yeah. They do it good. But okay. by the way, here's going away here, with the electoral college here's, entirely. Here's here's, no. here's Ray Renati. Uh, hey, how's it going? His head's on fire. He's out taking a walk. We can tell. Trick or treating. He, oh, he's trick or treating. Where did you go as? Uh, 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 yeah, as a celebrity <laughs> wannabe. <laughs> <laughs> you and Kanye West, buddy. Uh, I am. <laughs> Besides, there is such a thing as the ter- tyranny of the majority. Well, let's let's not. You know, I That's mean, what led to the election of the Nazi party. Well, yeah. Well, okay. Germany. So, so you don't want you don't want you don't want a majority vote to win. Yeah, no. you would do. But then your vote. Then your then your vote ain't worth shit. It's worth some shit. No, it's worth it. it it's it's like. Um, 
You remember, it kind of reminds me. It kind of reminds me. Remember, remember when the in the big mortgage crisis, the banks took all the loans and bundled them and then sold them off. It's kind of like that. You know, we didn't hold our elected so officials accountable. They bundle our votes. How, they how many, they mash them votes? down. They mash them down and compress them into like seventy-eight votes or something like that in New York. And off they go to Washington. And my one vote doesn't fucking count. Okay, you got seventy-eight uh, electoral college. Whatever, votes in New whatever. York, right? Yeah, I don't know. I, okay, I, how many do they have in Vermont? Probably like three. Well, you you have two. For uh, at least you have at least three, because you know how it's determined, don't you, Phil? Standard, right? Yeah, based on population. No. No. Congressional what do you, mean? you don't even know how an electoral uh, uh, appropriation is given out. Like, yeah, I know Maine, it, Maine, I understand, no, has one vote. No, right? no, 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 no. It's got to have at least three. Do you know why? No, tell me why. Two senators and one congressman. Yeah, that was a it's for every senator and congressman that you have. That's how many electoral votes you have. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Alex. I now I these that. other these other states. So <laughs> Phil, shut the, the Phil, shut the Phil, shut the fuck up because you don't even know you don't even know what the electoral college is. So shut the fuck up. No, wait a minute. They all have two senators. But uh, they have a lot more Congress people based on uh, right, population. population. Yes. So therefore, it's the fucking population, but there's, Alex. There's you the, don't know what the fuck you're talking it, about. Whoa. Oh, really? Right. That's oh, how it really? sounds when they don't pay. Well, money. it's not an exact representation of the population. <laughs> it's it's rounded off to the nearest millionth. Yeah. You know. So anyway, the the idea is how many people live in New York? How many people live in New York State, and how many how many electoral votes does it have? Wow, I, that's really a portion of well. And what do you got? You got uh, 30 million? 40 million? 30 something, million? I don't know. There, uh, there's something in New York City alone, I think we got to, we're up to uh, somewhere Ten. around 20 million. No, we're up around wow. 20 million. 20? New York like City's that. up to 20 12. million? I think at one point. I think it's 12. It, 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 wait a minute, hold wow. on a second. Population. I think the last pretty sure it's 12 service 12. happy compromises. Wouldn't you agree with that, Phil? Well, yeah. Uh, when I uh, so I what, think seventy. Yeah, you go. You go to some states. They got three uh, electoral college votes. You got other states. You got seventy-eight. I don't even know what you got in California. It's probably some humongous. Wow. Well, the population of New the population of New York is only eight thousand uh, eight point six two three million. Yeah. Wow. I thought New York it was more City. Than New York. Well, yeah. I, well, I said New York City. We, we I need oh, New York. No, I, it's more of a question. Okay, New York, so, thirty-one. Uh, see, Los Angeles is still hovering at, at closer to ten. And that's California, exactly 55. why. Yeah, that's why I hate going to L.A. Fifty-five million in California. No, 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 no. Fifty-five electoral votes. Oh, oh, okay. Thirty-one okay. electoral okay. votes in New York. Twenty-one. We don't need it. We, we just don't need this layer anymore. This entire layer of voting needs to be ripped out and just left the original way. I we don't need a layer. We need a layer, not that layer, but we no. do need a layer. What's to funny, what's funny is to begin with, Patrick's just been sitting there. Uh, what also is funny is that we, because of the we don't added, know that he's not real. Because of the added uh, uh, association here with Ray Renati, who is out trick or treating. We yeah, hear this co this heated conversation kids. in, uh, uh, and added to that conversation are kids, yeah, having a it's good so time. Cool. I love it's that. Cool. <laughs> I love that. Ray is the yeah, Pied Piper. We're all following him and his dog. Yeah, I'm going to the most busy, the busiest retreating street in Palo Alto. I'm headed. We can't see anything because it's pitch black. Yeah, it's dark. I, yeah, there's no moon tonight. Here's the sidewalk. Yeah. So, yeah. so Damien was talking about the people in the – some people in some expensive areas were writing letter, nasty little letters saying, if you wouldn't bring your people over here, we would have a better Halloween. Or don't bring your kids yeah. from the – oh. So, you know, all of the areas that I lived in were nice areas, and I never once minded the fact that there were carloads of people coming into the area so that their families can have a safe environment 
for them to have Halloween as well. I when, never had a problem with that. When I was married, uh, we, we lived in Arinda, and my kids grew up in Arinda, and we used to take them trick-or-treating to the best places. If you ever heard of Long's Drugs, those people lived in Arinda, and they put on a Halloween that was second to none. Uh, what they gave away was fantastic. And uh, we used to take them there. We knew where to take them, and and the, and the kids enjoy that. Yeah, I don't. I I just for the, all those. It, it's just a ridiculous thing to take this out against children. Granted, we're giving them candy, and that's probably not the best thing we should do. But they're not our kids, and that way the parents can deal with that. But to tell people that oh, they're not welcome in the area hey, for what happens? Well, well, what, 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 happens? what happens when we eat the candy? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the problem. Show's the guy who doesn't answer the doorbell. <laughs> I know. They, they, I see the lights. I used to ring the doorbell. Well, so I, what I used to do. this door. I said on the way out. <laughs> So what I used to do is before I went to bed Halloween night, I would put the candy in a bag, go over to my husband's vehicle, put it in the car, and make him to take it to work the next day. So that they have you to won't eat it. By the way, by the yeah. way, Phil is wearing his MAGA hat tonight because he's coming to our <laughs> Halloween party as a raging asshole. So no, just as a Who's racist. Coming over? Yeah. Hello, hello, Patrick. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Everybody, be quiet a second. Patrick has been sitting there quietly. Anything to say, Patrick? No. <laughs> I was going to say. That's my he Patrick. Say he'll raise his hand. That's my you know, Patrick. Just absorbing the conversation. I saw your your red hat. I got a red hat, and now Microsoft just spent thirty five oh, yeah, billion red for red hat. Yeah. You know. Well, this says U.S. Open on it, not Make America Great Again. Close which, enough. Which, by the way, is Ronald Reagan's. It's stolen. Right. Uh, not it again. Yeah. Right. Uh, by the way, Brian, are you live in Pittsburgh? That is oh, correct. Oh, nice, Patrick. That's uh, yeah, good. that guy is oh, in Pittsburgh. Yeah. That is correct. Yeah. yeah. How, how is the mood? That, the mood there must be bad. Palatable. It's pretty divided. More so anti-Trump than pro-Trump. As far as when I say division is concerned, but nevertheless divided. I can tell you that in spite of this tragedy and Bill Peduto trying to paint himself as a uh, American political leader, he is pretty much a piece of shit otherwise. Who's this? Bill Peduto, the mayor of Pittsburgh. Oh, okay. Some regional, some um, some local, a lot of local reasons as to why he is a piece of shit. Yeah, and and We've had some pretty good mayors. Uh, like the mayor of Philadelphia years ago used to be the police chief and i don't think he got out of the sixth grade well I, i'm trying to remember who he was he was really well if he was, if he was a police chief then he was an asshole anyway <laughs> uh 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 the mood in pittsburgh How many people what, what what ray oops he's breaking up he's breaking up you're breaking up how, ray how many how many i shoot my Okay. Yeah, you you're breaking up. I give up. Oh, there you go. Okay. You oh. you say it. Okay. Say it quick. You're in a good spot there. I said, how many blacks did he shoot? How many blacks did he Zero. shoot? Zero. You may be confusing that with the Kroger shooting, of which that guy shot two black black people, a one a black female and a black guy. Okay, I was so being everybody... just super sarcastic. Yeah. Right. Well, so okay. I, I want everybody to know if you're in a grocery store and shit like that is going down, go get the hornet spray. At least you've got some sort of defense. Go get the hornet spray and just save yourself. I already know what I'm going to do. I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is, if, if by some miracle I'm unscathed, or at least I have like a few superficial flesh wounds, before the police get to that son of a bitch, I'm gouging. Oh, yeah. I'm gouging his eyes out. <laughs> I'm gonna barf on him. him. Well, you must be responsible. You must be responsible for the death of Whitey Bulger then, because that's what yeah, they did to him. Yeah. Frank Rizzo. Frank Rizzo. Oh, Frank Rizzo was an asshole. You remember Frank Rizzo? He was a major asshole. <laughs> I love that guy. I know you yeah, probably. Up Philadelphia. Are, are in the game. Dick. Yeah, cleaned up Philadelphia. Hey, uh, Whitey Bulger lived to be 89, it's and he got hit by some mafia guy. Uh, you know, the guy was a mass. He was a murderer, 
and uh, you he know, also, but he ratted match. on the mob, you know, and they were yeah, just they were just the waiting. Ones. They 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 didn't yeah. care if he was eighty nine. Yeah, they they were, no, he wasn't. They found him like living in Newport Beach. That's right. It was on sixty minutes <laughs> yeah. as a retiree. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He probably voted. Yeah. So it was you know how they yeah. you know how they found him. Uh, he was using an assumed name. Somebody walked up to him and said, "Are you Whitey Bulger?" And he said, "Yes." Wow. Nope. So it well, that turns out that the person he was living with actually like uh, uh, did res animal rescue, uh -huh. and they kind of that. tracked him through the animal rescue part oh, of God. her. Really? Yep. Is is that why he killed her? I. Don't. I think they were they were on the lamb uh, at one point, and he he killed her in a hotel room. I don't Didn't think he? that's true. I don't think he did. No. He didn't kill her. They just found him living with the woman, and and they yeah, just arrested him. Yeah. yeah, she was really big on animal rescue, and it was on and, sixty minutes, I think. Yeah. Yeah, but she didn't. He didn't kill her. Yeah. No. But she got uh, him in trouble. Yeah, but they yeah. Uh, they they killed him, and they uh, they uh, carved his eyes out, and they think they cut off his tongue. Oh my God, that was a mob Good. hit. Yeah, it was, so, it was a mob hit. So, who the fuck didn't know that wasn't going to happen? Is all I want to know is how did the United States prison they system up, get sucked up. in to being to getting that person there at that time so somebody could just erase them off the planet? Well, because I think because they happen? didn't give a shit. I think somebody. I think people were paid off in the government to do it to get because he had just changed to that new prison. Right. Yeah. So. So it was, it, it's, it's why, well, fuck it, it's our prison system. I shouldn't even ask a question. Why. Yeah, Under right, it's our prison system again. Yeah. I, the people who are in he, prison, he, I'm sorry, we just, we can't help you. We he killed his partner's you. girlfriend. Uh, it, well, see, there's a big difference, Phil. All right, well. You know, do they make Everybody they have a drink. Movie? What? Because yeah. I heard something about movies about Whitey Bulger or something, right? Yeah. Or they made one. Was it the Leonardo DiCaprio was supposed to be him, or, or am I wrong? Not him. They did make a, mo a show on Showtime they that did the, for that three seasons that was based on the Bulger Brothers called Brotherhood. Oh, oh okay. Back in 2006 until 2008. Yeah, but then yeah. also the movie, I think, was the... Uh, the, uh, the, the one with uh, uh, Jack Nicholson and... No, that was Le based on a, 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 a Chinese... Uh, organized crime flick well no, i know it was based on that i know it was based on that but when they made the american version they also made it uh, a ramana cleft to uh, uh, uh to whitey bulger as well and who's that guy that jumped out of the airplane what's his name well Jimmy what does that Cooper. have to do with yeah. any of this well, did they ever find it no. no. Like oh, that's Robert. Uh, that was what's his name? John and we don't have anybody from the Pacific Northwest on, so they can't fill us in on anything. Yeah, right. That's because he jumped. Too. Yeah. No. Yeah. DB yeah. Cooper. DB yeah, Cooper. There was a movie yeah. called In Pursuit of DB Cooper with Robert Duvall, and uh, I think Robert Duvall was in it, but also uh, Treat Williams. Oh, Network is going to be on Broadway. Can you believe that? Why? Well, yeah. Go they made a Why? play on Network. Why, why why would you want to do that? Because well, that's the new thing. They make the plays out of movies. Yeah, well, they're doing uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, but Aaron Sorkin is writing the, scr the script. Uh, <laughs> and and it's uh, Daniels. Uh, um, Jeff, yeah. Jeff Daniels. Yeah. It's not a musical, though, right? No. Aaron Sorkin's no. writing a play oh he's well, written plays be before comedy? he wrote uh, as a play he wrote all the pre uh, uh, uh what's that one where the you know nicholson is doing you know you don't want the truth uh oh, a few good men, men. men. a few good, good men, men. Yeah, that was a man. that was a broadway okay. show that he wrote yeah, yeah. I want that. You that, that was a men. broadway show a few good men was a broadway show yes yeah. it mm -hmm. was you're kidding yes. me yeah. no it was huge before the movie or after? Yes, the movie? before the movie. After. Uh, after, after right. The before. Yeah, the play, yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, it was a play was before it was a movie. Before. Yeah. It was adapted from the play. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Thank yep. you. Me either. Yep. <laughs> so, you know, I mean. Um, it's a really good play. 
Sarkin's a very good writer, so I'm, I he, think oh, he yeah, probably well, he probably could do a pretty good job of a few of um, of uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Bill Huh? To Kill a Mockingbird. To Kill a Mockingbird. To Kill a Mockingbird. Yeah. Imagine there are a already musical, like though? three versions out there. <clears throat> a musical would be really weird. No, I don't think. What is the issue with this uh, To Kill a Mockingbird? I think that uh, and Alex uh, they've has still never read it, right? They've ta- no, they've taken the book out of some they've schools or something, uh, or they well, said that the play was. Uh, uh, what was the, it, it hasn't been a play until now, Phil. Yeah, well, they they won't show it. No, it's been a play. I've been in the play. Oh, there is a play. <laughs> really? Did they say a Mockingbird like twenty years ago? Oh, okay. Did they say it was uh, uh, you know anti-black or uh, uh, racist? No, uh, it's quite the opposite. No, they didn't say that, Phil. It's quite the opposite. But I think they he's thinking of Huckleberry they, they ran. They, no. uh, I'm going to Patrick next. They they uh, she wrote a, a second book or she wrote a prequel or a, uh, right. something afterwards in which he turns out to be a racist. But he isn't in To Kill a Mockingbird. Yes, Patrick. Uh, In Milwaukee, one of the high schools, they had a big uh, deal about it. They ended up canceling the play. That's it. That's it. After all of the kids get all the work, they cut the word nigger is in it. And Ah. the, uh, the, the, um, the Black Panthers in Milwaukee as well as some of the people on the school board at the, uh, at, in the district that this was in, thought that it was a racist play and didn't realize that it's an anti-racism play. Yeah. And because the word nigger was used, the Black Panthers went absolutely apoplectic. And it just shows the ignorance now of... So many people. Everybody. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Right, and and the thing is. No, that isn't what you were saying. Yeah, Phil. No, you, I said you were it all... was a play. They said it was racist. Uh, they they try to stop it, you know, and that's it's what he thought about. It was in a it's high school. It's so ahead of its time. It was against racism. The whole. I understand. Is in, I understand. Against. Ray, oh. this is this is just what happened recently. Wait a minute. At a Wait a minute. There's still Black Panthers. Oh, okay. Yeah, right, right. This happened in what? Milwaukee a few weeks ago. They canceled the play because the Black Panthers in Milwaukee, as well as the uh, school board and some of the parents, are so fucking stupid that they've never read it, didn't mm. understand that the book and the play were about racism and anti-racism, but because the word nigger was used, yeah. it was racist. What a bunch of idiots. Yeah, and, and that is... the thing is, the kid worked so hard on this, yeah. and they canceled it, then they oh my God. Back just to be, a, it was just going to be a dress rehearsal for the parents, and then they canceled it anyway, because the head of the Black Panthers in Milwaukee was going to do a protest at the school, and the superintendent of the school did a little uh, spineless trick. Yeah, most of them are. Those Black Panthers are real stand-up guys. Here's a little moron. I mean, that whole group. I, I didn't know there were. I didn't. I didn't know there were even. I didn't know there were even Black Panthers anymore. And if oh, they yeah. are, oh, yeah. and if they are, they are. They're an anachronism. Yeah, but if no, you fuck him up, his name is Big Rick of the original Black Panthers, and that's what they call themselves. And he's a moron, and he just he's a troublemaker here in the city. Any anything that he can do to fuck shit up and this play. Well, I knew about the Black Panthers, and I never heard of a big Rick. No, yeah, this is the idiot in Milwaukee. He's about thirty years old. Oh, then yeah. Because you don't live in Milwaukee yeah. any more than I do. It's a spin-off of the Black Panthers, like. No, he, he claims that he he did, but the thing is, most of the kids that I met. Hey, do me a favor. Hold on a second, uh, Ray. Would you turn? Would you turn yeah, on? Would yeah, you mute yeah. yourself because what it's doing is it's affecting Patrick's sound. Patrick. Yeah. Go ahead, Patrick. Anyways, you were saying. All of the black kids that I went to high school with, 
And I don't remember if we had to play there, but I know we read the damn book. Mm -hmm. They all understood what the hell it was. All of the white kids did too. And yes, when we read portions of it in class, when that word would come up, everybody would kind of go, mm -hmm. but it was part of the book. It was part of you know, well, yeah, I mean, how do you, how do you display, to begin with, I, I didn't see the movie till about two years ago. And people oh, go, oh, yeah. oh, oh you, you never saw it to kill a mockingbird. So I sat down, I watched it, and it's okay. You know, I, I didn't see that it was as great as a lot of people felt it was. <laughs> I was too young uh, when I saw it. I saw it when yeah. it first came but, out. But it, it, and... it was, it was, uh, uh, how you could possibly do that without using the word is beyond yeah, me because it. because it is a it is all about racism and about making this this child understand what racism is about right. and what you you're going to have two uh, uh, two uh, southern people sitting around talking about that black person over there you know right. i mean uh, <laughs> The, come on, American person, yeah. you know so you, the guy who's with the black panthers is a total fucking moron you know if he is with the black panthers they're all morons are, no, you don't people. judge a whole group of people by the actions of them. one, they're Phil. A bunch of lawless because morons. because otherwise See, we will Phil, sit here. That's, that's what we will sit here and figure that all Trump people are just like. Well, wait a minute. Uh, I'm sorry, Phil. You're right. <laughs> oh yeah. Anyway, they're yes. murderers. They're bombers. Hey, if you if you lived you in are. Oakland, uh, you knew. Uh, or San Francisco in the seventies. I knew, uh, I knew Black Panthers. Okay, and and I'm and sure and they did. they were they had a target on their back from Bobby guys Steel like you, one, right? and they were uh, they all they did was they stood out there with guns and said we're protecting the black community and everybody got oh. apoplectic because how dare black people have guns, you know? Yeah. They were trying to intimidate people. And they were, and, and, they, they were, and, they and did, obviously and they, they did a good a job. They did obviously, they into, obviously they did a good job of intimidating you. Yes, uh, yeah, well, yes. I'm, I was a cop yes, Charlene. Cops don't like black people. Cops suck. Okay. Yeah. What? Well, what a black you know Bobby Seal? What? Bobby Seal was knew Bobby of him. Was a black panther, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You knew him. Yeah. I've, I've been in his presence, let's say. I've had words right. with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Like Tom Hayden, I think you were in his presence. No, I was never in Tom Hayden's I, pre I, I presence, and Tom, I wouldn't yeah. want to be because he was an asshole. Mm -hmm. I, I met Tom Hayden. He was pretty, Mary Jane he was pretty fast on his feet, though. He was, he was fast he was on his feet, guy. but he was an asshole. He was a total fucking asshole. Egotist. Um, well, yeah. you know. Hey, can I tell you a Black Panther story? Sure, go ahead. Uh, when I was in college, my girlfriend uh, was going on bike rides with, uh, what's his name? The one who got killed uh, in Oakland. Um, one of the head Black Panthers from the six. Uh, well, there was Bobby Seale and there was. Huey Long. Huey, Huey Newton. Huey, Huey Newton. Newton. Huey, Huey Newton. Newton. Yeah, Huey yeah. Long was uh, Louisiana. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Huey Newton, the guy that moved to Cuba and invented those pants with the zipper. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Huey Newton, and uh, and uh, she was going on bike rides with him, and I almost shit my pants. Said you, because my my feeling, because I was still from the sixties. That was Eldridge Cleaver. You're were... thinking of? Oh, okay. No, no, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, uh, I was. Thinking. I just like said you cannot, you cannot go ride your bike with this guy. You know. Yeah. Um, I went. I went shit. I just went ape shit, like Phil well, does right now um... about the. But I. I <laughs> <laughs> but then he, and then he got killed a few years later. And his, his, somebody hunted him down and shot him at Lake, Lake Merritt. Like the dogs that they are. Yeah, yeah right. Because they didn't. Because yeah, it, he, he the only thing dog. is, you, I defy you to tell me of somebody that the Black Panthers killed. But I'll tell you how many Black Panthers were killed by cops. The, uh, the guy who was the head of the uh, Oakland school system. Uh, and uh, that was. Um, no, 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 no. That was part of the Patty Hearst thing. No, 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 no. no that was no, part no. of the this Patty was... Hearst thing. I'm no, telling you that no, right it had now. Nothing to do with Patty. Hearst. I know who this you're was... talking about, and it was part of the Patty yeah. Hearst situation. It was the, it, these guys came out of the bakery. Uh, no, uh, it, in, uh, in it, Oakland. It was part of the. Uh, if I remember Indian correctly, it, Army. It, yeah, it was no, part of the was symbiote. Long after and, that. Because my friend was uh, a sergeant in Oakland, and he was on the case. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, and so, uh, who did they who did they find did it? 
Uh, it was the people that owned the Black Muslim Bakery. Uh, and uh, and that, they were, they were the, the Black Panthers? Yes. Well, the, they were ex-Black Panthers. Well, uh, let me tell you what I know about, uh, about Black Panthers. Uh, there was this country called Wakanda. Uh, <laughs> <and> <laughs> Sorry. I hated that movie. Phil didn't even get that, but Why he's too white to no, get no, it. No, I was Why looking up. I think uh, it's because it, it, it was dark. They, they, they accidentally was, kept the 3D lens on the, on the projector. And it was so dark, I couldn't see the Me too. Thing. Me too. And I, 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 I finally had to download it from the internet, which I did illegally because I paid to see it, but I couldn't see it. It was, was just it better a, light. Was it better when it was yeah, light? Yeah, it was better with lights. Yeah. Well, I mean, when it was light, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have to watch it again because it's. Yeah. See, watch it. I watched it in the daylight, and I was like, "Wow, this is." And really by the way, by the way, movie industry, strange. come get me for having downloaded it. I paid for that fucking picture, it, and I didn't was, get to see it. So fuck yeah. you. It was Yusuf Bay, and he killed Chauncey uh, Bailey, who was. Uh, I never heard of Yusuf Bay. And, uh, was Yusuf Bay a member of the Black Panthers? I, I no, believe so. Was, no, you believe so. Bakery. Was he? Muslim Bakery. No, Muslim Bakery, but was he a member of the Black Panthers? That was no. where the Black Panthers headquarters uh, were. According to Rene, no. I don't think so either. I don't remember anything about the Black Panthers. I remember him killing Chauncey Bailey. All I know I is, is the Black Panthers never the Black ki- that I know of never killed anybody, but they got killed by fucking cops. Uh, yeah, Elijah Mohammed. Oh, gee, you're quick looking for justification. You're wrong, Phil. I'm just looking for the... You're game. wrong, I Phil. Know, you're I wrong. Such a racist. Huh? Yeah. God, Phil, you're such a racist, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get my noose out. <laughs> no, you are a racist. Well, wait, while you're... A, a, as long as you're getting that news, Phil, would you hang yourself, please? These people... <laughs> I caramba. These people are Americans. Yeah, these people they are, are Americans. They're so criminals. They're just be, why? Just because they're black? No, because of their affiliation with the Black Panthers and the uh, and the black your black Muslim bakery. It, oh my God! What about all the white criminals? What about all the purple? Criminals? Well, yeah, they're they're. In what about what thing. about? Can you sing the um, song, Alex? What about? No, but that's about, an actual what about. What about? That's, uh, a, that's there's a no actual what, what about in Alex's world. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Oh God, uh, this is uh, Let's this is. Let's pick another subject. If people want, uh, if people want a perfect example of, uh, if, come in all shapes, colors, sizes, religions, and creeds, and sexual orientations. So, yep. Let's move on with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Someone has a Halloween cause. So, you ever, everybody remember January when we had that false missile alert? Yeah, yes. Hawaii had that. Right. Yeah, so, somebody went to work as an iPhone with the warning on, across the iPhone mm-hmm. saying this is a false missile alert. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she wore it the whole day. That was great. There is a great. I was gonna. I was gonna make a video out of it and show it here. There was a kid who did a. a her, her parents did a beautiful costume. She was two years old, so she was really small. Okay, so they built a costume where. They built up the top of it so she was headless. And then she was holding her own head, which was poking out of the costume. <laughs> it was beautiful. That's great. It was just beautiful. If you go online, really you can find good. it. Uh, that, to me, oh, was the ha- Halloween costume of the year. And she was so I cute, saw, too. She looked adorable. Uh, yeah. So I saw uh, 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 a daddy or a... a and he was carrying the kid in one of those things across the, so a Bianchi or whatever it's called. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they made it look, so they dressed the kid up like the president, put him in a suit, put him with a red tie, and they made his little carrier into um, a, po- a, a, a place where you give speeches from. So it had the United, you know, the presidential seal on all of it. So he was the little president, and his dad was the Secret Service. <laughs> it That's was very cute. cute. I probably didn't do it justice, but it was cute. It sounds like it was adorable. But Phil wouldn't find it adorable. I do like the slinky dogs the best. Huh? So far. Slinky. So this lady had two twins. Actually, the parents had two uh, twins, right? Mm-hmm. And so in Toy Story, 
they always had the slinky dog and one would go this way and one, and then they'd boing back together. Mm -hmm. So what they did is they took the twins, put dog faces on both of them, you know, the cartoon dog faces. Yeah. And then they got a cable and ran it in between them. And so it looked like they were the slinky dog. <laughs> Right. From Toy Story, it was very cute. Yeah. I was just very happy. Cool. I, you know, you know, the kids I feel sorry for are the kids whose parents are so without um, creativity that they go to the local Dwayne Reed and oh, buy them a costume for like the Flash, you know, and it's just like this paper mache. If it rained, the costume would fall apart, you know. And I feel so sorry for those kids, you know, uh, because. I, although I feel sorry for myself when I was a kid because my mother was so without talent that way that every year I was a pirate <laughs> because she could give me one of her blouses to wear, a pair of jeans, yep. uh, <laughs> a, a, a pair of her earrings, right? Yeah, uh, a, 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 a scarf for a, for a, a head bandana, right? And then yeah. she would make a... Hoops cardboard sword and put it in a sash around my waist and I was a pirate right until it, until it rained and my cardboard sword melted you know but that was that's what I was almost every year because my mother had plus you couldn't go to Dwayne Reed and buy the flash costume you know so uh, uh, yes uh, uh, yes uh, Charlene Sorry, I don't know where to put my hand. I have a story like that. My mother had a costume, and she used to, like, extend it. It didn't fit me, but she would, like, lengthen the sleeve and add pieces to it, and I had no mask. I have a picture in black and white of myself as a little kid, and I'm like, Ma, what was I supposed to be? She was very uncreative like that, too. And they we didn't have the costumes that they have today like that, you know? Yeah. These kids are lucky. Yeah. They have everything to choose from, right? Right. Yeah, but, but I they used to love making it. Yeah, yeah, I used to have to use, I would use my mother's skirt to make like a cape to be like a witch. Mm -hmm. You couldn't buy a witch costume. You know, you had to be creative, find things in the house, right? Yeah. Right, right. My grandmother was a, a seamstress. She used to make dresses. She made me, I told Jackie this. A dress? Find, she made me Spider Man. Like she actually, she was always knitting wow. and sewing. She was very creative. And you she need actually to find made, that. I gotta find that picture. My mother has it. I actually, literally, my Spider Man mask went all over the thing. My, she wow. sold the whole thing really good. She was very, my mother was okay, but my grandmother was like, really, I'm not trying to brag, but she was talented. Wow. So she always used to sell everything. How about you, Patrick? What was the most disgusting costume you ever had to wear? <laughs> I saw his Yoda, he had a good Yoda one. Tell him, Patrick. Most disgusting. Yeah. I, I always had the, um, like, the mask that I just put up. That was uh, actually from 1979, a uh, uh, Star Wars mask. Mm -hmm. Put it up again. That, well, it's a Boba Fett it. mask, it right? It was cool. Yeah, yeah it's good. It, it, it's the original Boba Fett mask that they had to redo the next year when the movie came out because it's inaccurate in the colors and all of that. But um, I was Yoda. Uh, it was a mask like that of Yoda, and then it was a um, vinyl one-piece you know, suit you wore, and it said who you were so that all the old people knew what the hell you were. <laughs> oh. and, so you didn't have to tell them all the time? <laughs> and, um, vampire, army guy, uh, pirate. I mean, my mom wasn't that creative. You know, yeah. I was the one who came up with the ideas. Yeah. And like for Dracula, I remember I had to make my own medallion around my neck. So it was, it was similar to, what was it? Was that the Bella Lugosi one? Yeah. Where he had a medallion? Well, yeah. actually, I mean, actually, it was, in fact, the Star of David. That was a self-driving car. Was it really? Yeah. What was a self-driving well, car? Okay, so the car two, that was I just it really? Chose. Yeah, a, is that a Google? Ray, thing? we can only yeah. see your photo of your hair on fire. What a car just went by that was a self-driving car. One of those Ubers that drives itself, right? No, usually they they have somebody in it, Waymo. but the car is driving. Oh, you can't see that. Yeah, it's Waymo. Yeah, there's always somebody sitting in there. They get paid twenty bucks an hour. They, yeah, they have to. to there has they to be somebody get paid in twenty bucks an hour to flirt with death. Is that what this is all about? Yeah. 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 Hey, I, I, I saw the worst Halloween costume today. I, I, you know, I have this trouble with my 
some hemorrhoids. And so I had to go to my proctologist and he dressed as a poop emoji. And I just thought it was <laughs> really bad taste. You know, he thought it was funny. Wait, oh, come on. You have to give him props for making effort, right? I've got a gastroenterologist. Give him props or poops. That's funny to me, right? I don't like my gastroenterologist. He's not that great either, like with humor. Oh, I love my gastroenterologist. He's the best guy I've got of all the doctors that I have. He's the, the best one. How about your proctologist? How's he? Well, uh, he, well, this this guy looks up my ass too, you know. Yeah. Oh, cool. He's a gastroenterologist. He gets you at both ends. <laughs> you know, he's the one that does the colonoscopy, and he does the one that does the uh, um, uh, the other oscopy that goes down the throat. You know. And what a job! Huh? Yeah. I I oh, want I wanted to get a guy I wanted to get I wanted to, I wanted to get three doctors. A space that they can't see in the middle. Well, I wanted I wanted <laughs> to get three doctors. So the proctol you know a guy to do a cystoscopy which goes in your penis, and a guy to do a colonoscopy which goes up your ass, and then the one that goes down your throat which is a uh, uh, endoscopy. endoscopy. Which why isn't yeah. the endoscopy the one that goes up your ass? I don't understand that. <laughs> You so know. what are you trying and, to and, do? Is and then I want them to all somewhere? do all do it at the same time and see if they can see each other. Mm. Well, if they do, you got a problem. <laughs> I, got yeah. my, I got my colon screening kit yesterday. Uh, <laughs> the uh, DNA thing, right? The no, DNA. no, no, no. This no, is, no, no. Uh, He's got to wash. <laughs> you, you take a little poop and you send With it back brush. to them. Yeah, it's the, the only brush. time you can send your shit through the mail and people don't mind. Right. Yeah. yeah. Probably wouldn't work if you're like this and taller. I don't want to be the one that the opens it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, but um, yeah, I just you know, Halloween was terrifying to me. I never liked, as I got older, never liked getting into costumes. Right. You right. know, and um, don't worry, Alex. I hate all holidays democratically. Oh, okay. Well, it's very good for you because I like Thanksgiving. I really, oh, I sorry, really, but, uh, really like Thanksgiving. I, it's a non-religious holiday, and it's a holiday in which everybody just gets together, eats, talks. But it's rooted in celebrating the massacre of a Native American of, of Native American people. So. No, it's not. Yeah, it was supposed to be that uh, it was celebrating the alliance between the Native Americans and the settlers, uh, and celebrating that they helped the settlers. Uh, and we all know how, how to. Really no, no, but all I'm saying like is you're wrong because the 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 Thanksgiving, really the the first Thanksgiving was the settlers and the Indians together in harmony. Yeah, and we see how the uh, settlers repaid the Indians. Well, they, they, that's that's in yeah, retrospect. They pushed them right out. And they aren't Indians; they're Native Americans. Well, they're uh, American Indians then, but they're not Native. They were here time. first. Let's put it well, that you know, way. you got you. Uh, you they have to. You have, right. You're living on their land, Alex. You're squatting in New York. Hey, you, you bought it for twenty. We bought it for twenty four fucking you bucks. Those guys hey, off. you you made the deal. You take the money. You know, hey, come on. The, hey, you know, you you ripped them off, and and now you're squatting on their land. Yeah. Well, yeah. you were saying something about me earlier. What was it? No, what I was saying was you just take the fun out of everything. Well, you just squeeze. Stuff. You just squeeze every little bit you can out of any anything. Like it's called the truth I, hurts, doesn't it? I like thanks. And the truth doesn't hurt because Thanksgiving. You're all wrong about. Well, quoting the uh, quoting few good men, you can't handle the truth. Most people can't. No, no, I no one's native. Everyone's from Africa. And, and by the way, you know the very slaughter, true, the true. slaughter, right. or the slaughter of the Native Americans in this country didn't happen till way later, actually. Uh, the the uh, Native Americans kind of slaughtered the Americans when they first got here because uh, uh, yeah they're not they're not any they more were, special they, than the people that and they here. fought alongside of us in the French and Indian War yeah yeah, yeah. Phil did you know they were actually all Negroes <clears throat> uh, no uh, we are we all from Africa we're all Negroes. Is that a term? Yeah, we we all look we all look very black. You know, no, and, we, we're all Negroes at, at the core. You know, it's funny. Yeah. It's very funny. But I when I was when I was growing, when I, I was growing up. I had a lot of uh, I had a lot of black friends because I I hung out with the kids from Marin City, in Marin County, and they were all black. They, those were projects. 
but I liked them because they had talent. You know, they could sing and they could uh, um, uh, they they could create works of art, and they were terrific. Okay, so that's why I liked hanging out with them. And uh, the fact of the matter was that uh, um, uh, I uh, I had a fond appreciation for black people. But the, oh, this was the point I was going to make. But if I had called any one of them black, they would have fucking crucified me. <laughs> That's because they were colored. No, they would have fucking crucified me. In those days, you called them Negroes, and that was okay. But if you called them black, names. they'd go, hey, man, I'm not. What are you calling me, man? You know. But I think that just speaks to the how our language changed. An African-American, if I called them that, they would have beat the crap out of me. Oh, now, yeah. what happened when Am the I right, Patrick? hair came out? Patrick is going yes. Afro-American. You, you agree? Uh, you remember the play hair? Well, can, I'm talking oh, to Patrick, the, Phil. The, uh, the I'm, talking, I'm talking to Pat, Patrick, yeah, Phil. Someone's got their hand up, and it's Patrick. Yeah, Patrick. Fuck you, too. No, thanks. You're not my type. Yeah. Oh, snap. Oh, this yeah. is getting <laughs> real ugly tonight. Why but can't I, we I all just Patrick, get along? Anyway, yeah. yes, Patrick. Pa are you going to make an offer to Patrick? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I've got a friend of mine, and he's, he's here in Milwaukee. He, he's originally from um, Louisiana, and he's black, and he calls himself black, and he says he never wants to be referred to as African American because he said he's never been in the motherland. He said none of his, none of his, nearest ancestor, meaning his parents or grandparents, were from there. He said, so why the fuck would anybody put me with Africa? And, you know, I, I thought, well, you, you, got, you make it sound like what? Yeah, it does. But, I mean, that's like me. I'm Slovenian and Bohemian, and I've never been anywhere near there. And that's been two generations ago. And I don't pe tell people well, that because I'm American, and that's but you know what we should all do? We should all have to wear necklaces with the name we want to be called, okay? <laughs> so I that, was born oh, in Brooklyn, so that means I'm black. No, no, Phil. No, no. Not, not even close. Let's see here. Oh, yes, Renee has her hand up. Brian was first. No, Brian was I'll first. Just, I'll just say real quick, uh, kind of take issue with the fact that... Uh, just because I squeeze the fun out of shit doesn't mean it can't be funny. Look at the half, 50% of the comedic talents of George Carlin and 100% of the comedic talents of Doug Stanhope. There is bitter and cynical, especially Doug Stanhope. There is, he's as bitter and cynical as fuck, but he makes me laugh. He, he, he makes me shit my pants with never, laughter. Never paid attention to him. You uh, should. You, no. You were talking about uh, your friend uh, Ruben. Yeah. Uh, so I pulled out one of his pictures that I took. Uh huh. Doesn't look Not like he name. used to look. So, uh -uh. did you see one of the Dodgers baseball games, the World Series, that Jimmy Kimmel and Matt Damon were sitting together? Oh, that's and very one funny. Had the shirt I'm... On that says I'm with stupid, and the other one said I'm with stupid, and they were pointing at each other. Yeah. That was good. I, 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 I wanted to know what their wives wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> he had the same yeah. shirt. If, if you saw your significant other on television with that shirt on, wouldn't you want to say something to that person out loud? <laughs> well, I thought it was very funny. <laughs> you know. Ignorance breeds? I don't know. Maybe. Because <laughs> they've always always been kidding each other. You know. So. I'm lost. Huh? What do you mean? I got Palo lost. Alto? Yeah. What do you mean you got lost? I'm lost in my own neighborhood. I, I am. I'll, feel, I'll find <laughs> well, How do you, you get, can get food tonight? Just go and trick or treat. Yeah. And, at least I will starve. You, you will starve, right. <laughs> we'll send the power Wait a minute. Now, are you are you leading some kids around at all, or are you just doing it? You're yeah. taking the walk yourself. No, he's got kids. I, I was taking a walk, but I went too late because around here, people don't trick or treat late on a school night. Yeah, well, they're all finished down in the Curfew. courtyard Curfew, here. Curfew, right? They they were yeah. through at about nine o'clock tonight. Yeah, they got to keep you hoodlums off the street. 
Yeah. But you know something? I got to tell you, it's really it's really nice. And some people get bothered by this. They go, why don't they let those kids run around in the courtyard? And I love it. I love hearing the sound of kids do. having a good time and, you know, God, being happy. Yeah. What was in the news the other day that if uh, people over 12 trick-or-treated that they'd get arrested uh, in this one town? What? Huh? Yeah. I think you couldn't be over 12 or 13 and they'd, uh, they'd arrest you. Is Charlene has her, have to bring an ID? Charlene has oh, her hand crazy. up. Basically. Oh, I'm sorry. If you, I got, got, to if you got facial hair, you're going to jail. I, I got to fix this issue that I can't. But, um, I, you know, are, this is switching. But does, did anyone hear about the other car people? I know Rob is a car guy. Matt Damon was set on fire. When Renee said Matt Damon, it reminded me. He was. He's making a movie about... Shelby, he plays Shelby, like the oh, Cobra. yeah, Cobra, Errol Shelby, or designer, Carol Shelby. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I forget who else I have, but I'm so excited because don't ask me what I know about a Shelby Cobra Mustang. I don't know, guys I knew or something taught me about Shelby Cobra and all that. And there's another guy, I'm sure they did. <laughs> I would have to Google, I don't know what the name of it is, the movie, but uh, Matt Damon caught on fire by accident, but he had he wasn't, you know, badly hurt. Because he had was he a wearing Nomex, on a Nomex. But by accident, they had like fire, you know, for something. It was on that the race actually, track. There you go with your Mexican thing again. Jeez. Nomex. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> hey. God. He never is. <laughs> hey, they're coming to the border. They're gonna come get you, Phil. They're yeah, gonna come gonna streaming 15, across that 000, border. What? Fifteen thousand military now. 15,000 military. Let's have this conversation. By the time we invade Mexico. Here's the, here's the best part. By the time they get here, by the time they get here, they're only going to be 500 people. Put they, on you know, your BDU, that's going to be great to see that 15,000 troops. You know, if, if we've got 15,000 troops on the border and we invade Mexico, we can get all the bookends, the sombreros, the tequila. We'll ta we'll rape and pillage that country. You know what Trump's going to send them to the south of the border? No. I, I don't believe what I Phil says because he thinks it's funny. Mike jobs. What? All the Magic Mike jobs. What's that? <laughs> you know the movie Magic Mike? It was like Chippendales. Yeah. yeah. One of the guys was making a joke, and he said that all those Mexicans are all buff. And you can bounce the peso yeah. off their ass, <laughs> and they're going to take over all the magic, magic mic right. jobs. Matthew McConaughey. And, uh, uh, yeah. Yes, uh, yes, uh, Renee. Um, so is anybody talking about the two girls that were found in the river over there? Near, we, near we mentioned it earlier. Mentioned we, it. We mentioned what it the earlier. hell is that? What is that? Uh, they they know. think it's a suicide. Saudi. Oh. Saudi. You're, you're that a, a family thing? Wait, we don't suicide with our hands tied. Their together. feet, that their feet, kind of no, their works. feet were gaffered taped together, and they feel that the two Ducks. of them jumped out, uh, jumped into the water, and drowned. Hmm. Yeah, no. No, no. They, the police have looked at this. You know, when they, if they think it's a murder, they're the first ones to say it's a murder. They uh -huh. said there is no sign of violence in this at all. That's another use for gaffer tape. Yeah. That's just strange. Yeah. Not one that I ever thought of. Yeah, but that it's it's really, really strange. strange. And they were um, uh, wait for uh, details uh, to follow. And they were two beautiful girls too, women. Yeah. Uh, they That's were, what makes it stranger. Yes, I mean, but there was no violence. They could not find anything violent uh, that had been done to the bodies or you know that they think the two Khashoggi. of them, the two of them, they couldn't find they couldn't find anything violent on Khashoggi. But wait, wait, hold on a second, it's Phil. Let Khashoggi us finish and this. That's not a good joke. Not a yeah. Joke. I laughed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they were doing a three-legged race and got off off track. Yeah, that could know? be. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> oh, <geez>. oh, <laughs> yeah. It was a. It was a. Yeah. He, it, 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 let me. The joke doctor's in. Uh, it was a three-legged race gone wrong. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> you know, don't they Thank have the those, edit. Those, like, have those family killings where the uh, if the woman does something that embarrasses the the family that they call uh, honor uh, killings. What do they call it? Honor, honor killings. killings. Honor killings. Yeah. You think this could have been one of those? You know, they tape them up, throw mm -hmm. them off the bridge. There was no evidence of violence, Phil. Not even when they hit the water. 
Phil, Phil, Phil. 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 Jack this, this was, this was uh, uh, determined by the New York Police Department, and compared to the police departments you've been with, they know what they're doing. Yeah, you can yeah. really trust those guys. Bernie Wait Carrick? No, no, no. Hold on. If anybody knows dead bodies in a river, it's the New York PD. Right. No? That doesn't yeah. work? Yeah. I thought it was good. They wash okay, up fine. in Staten Island on the PD. Yeah. Yeah. It, yes, Patrick. See, if anybody knows floaters... From the Hudson River, yeah. Patrick. <laughs> yeah. No. So I think when Alex is saying no violence, that means there's no bruising or anything of any of that where it could have been an honor killing where somebody took them and threw them. There's probably no bruising anywhere that showed that somebody grabbed them or forced them. Why would they be taped up? Somebody had to tape them up. They yeah. probably they could have taped their own legs together. Yeah, we don't. We're women. We yeah, no. Maybe they thought they were going to meet seventy-two virgins. No, no, that goes the other way around. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, shit, sorry, sorry. They were the virgins. Okay, not funny, but still. You're so, laughing. Yeah, I yeah, did. You're laughing exactly. I, I did. These are two dead women, and we're sitting here making jokes. It's a little early, isn't it? Too soon. Too soon. Yeah. Well, the jokes are. The bodies are. The bodies are, the bodies are still what? drying out for crying out loud. What? What? It's Halloween. It's appropriate to be yeah. a more oh, Halloween irreverent. <laughs> I suppose. I suppose. Oh, gee, I'm looking at my activities. And if you're here. laughing or smiling, you have no room to talk. I, I, hey, I, Alex, I any, any kids knock on your door tonight? I'm no, sorry. not a single kid Peter knocked Alex, on our door. Do you have candy? Yes. Oh, all right. Lots of it. Bears really? Bears. Tons of it. <laughs> You know what I also How did? How are they going to get to your apartment? Every night, every I mean, night, they'd have to like. Every night, girlfriend and I. Kids in the building. Every night, girlfriend oh. and I have a sugar-free pudding cup, yeah. okay, and two sugar-free chocolates. Mm-hmm. And the thing is that because of Halloween, they aren't carrying the sugar-free chocolates in our neighborhood, and I couldn't find anywhere, so I sent away eighty dollars worth of sugar-free Hershey's chocolate. <laughs> to Amazon, good for you. to Amazon, Damn. the milk chocolate, uh, caramel chocolate, and uh, also Reese's peanut butter cups, sugar free. Wow. What other what other crap is in that that uh, will kill you? Sugar, besides the sugar, sugar alcohols. Oh, but they won't they won't kill you. But you wish you were dead because if you eat too many you, of them, you'll shit like a bandit. You can buy those Atkins bars and Atkins candies. Uh, uh, and they're also that kind of sugar alcohol rather than sugar, but you can't eat too many of them. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, you'll, you didn't yeah, listen to me. Crazy. I said because you'll shit like a bandit. Well, they, yeah, it's or they good. get fat. They have a laxative effect. Yes, Patrick. I, you guys must channel me, or I channel you. I do basically the same thing. Um, I have two peanut butter cups, the smaller ones. Yeah, and that's what I have for kind of a, a treat after I'm, you know, like after the show tonight, that yeah. I'm happy before bed, just that. Yeah. Just enough to, because I like chocolate, and just enough to quench that, and that's it. By the way, Vern we just left. we just lost Vernon, yeah. I, w- I really wish he had uh, been able well, to t- that- get in more tonight, but he was not getting a good signal. Anyway, no, the thing is that, uh, w- w- I mean, hold on a second, there was something you were saying, and I, I, I can't remember what it was now. Anyway. Well, so now that I've moved to Hawaii, I like putting the chocolate in the freezer. So it's really nice when it's hot to have a frozen Reese's mm-hmm. peanut butter cup. Yep. Well, no, I put them. I, I put them in the. Refri- I put them. In, I put them in the refrigerator. And uh, okay. the the uh, although we're running now out of the uh, pudding, uh, the Cups? puddings, and all there's going to be left is chocolate. And I like the ones with the swirl in it. Uh, what brand? Uh, but do you buy? that that yeah, kid, I want to know that. Uh, Jello, yeah, J- Jello. Yeah. I get the Costco or something like that. K O S K I or yeah, but is it su- is it sugar free? Yeah, sugar free. Really? I never yeah. heard of what you're talking about. It's a California brand, I think. K O S K I, something like that. K-O-S-K-I. Yeah. Yeah. Alex, yeah. you said Jello, right? Jello. Yeah, it's just Jello. I'm watching my sugar. Thanks for that tip about the. Hershey's. I well, I, you know, I was on a low carb diet and it was perfect. You know. Yeah, so you I'm just eating all but, the Halloween candy and I'm watching my sugar. This is terrible. Okay, so just Alex, the thing Alex said is a very big deal. 
you consume too much of this stuff and you will be miserable on the toilet. Oh, so like diarrhea. Please, yeah, um, yeah, you don't want to do too much of it. That's why we do two a night, maybe a third, yeah, no. a couple of peanut oh, butter okay. cups, don't and that's it. it. You know. No. Uh, if I bring those home, I can't stop eating them. I eat them until they're all gone. And they also yes. have tapioca. The tapioca is good, too. Yeah. Well, yes, Patrick. But everybody had a toilet like Renee. It wouldn't matter. Yeah, it wouldn't matter. Right. Yeah, I was thinking about giving those out for Christmas. Everybody get a, a washette. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. mind it. No. I I'm remember serious. hearing about that amazing toilet. What you get a get? toilet. You get a toilet. I would love it. <laughs> Renee, I wouldn't mind. What does it do again, Renee, the toilet? <laughs> well, let's see. It, no. Um, you can air dry yourself. You you wash yourself with water. And and you get to chew. By the way, all you guys, if you've got anything to do, go do it right now because it doesn't have anything to do with us. Go ahead. Yeah, there oh. you go. <laughs> sorry. Hey, uh, I, I, I hate to interrupt, but um, there's a kid. There's a, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Well, well there's, a kid, there's a kid here. Uh, I just up ahead dressed as a bandit, and maybe I could interview him and see oh. how he's been, how his shitting, how his shitting has been going tonight. Uh, um, maybe he's really a mugger. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I w that was bad. All right. Yeah, bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just offed yourself, oh. Ray. <laughs> but I, you know, I don't like the idea of giving out candy to kids. I'd like to give out sugar-free candy, but you know. It, they see the word sugar free and they don't think it's going to taste any good. And it tastes just like the real thing, you know. But, you know, if we could come up with a good. Better. Well, I, you know, good, here in New York, they came out with this thing where they did a way, you know, put a big tax on sugary drinks. Well, yes. you know. Oh, that, my, that was your did it uh, help? previous yeah. mayor. Yeah. Well, I mean, Robert. I didn't like him making a law about it. I think it was a good idea to advise people to do that. Right. But on the, other, on the other hand, he, they didn't do anything about sugar-free candy. Well, you know, right. I mean, it, yeah. it, it, he should have, uh, quite frankly, I think that's more of a problem than the sodas. All he cares about is soda. So, Alex, I left New well, York, and I don't remember. Like, like they actually tax, like in McDonald's, it's higher I tax. I think there's a higher tax now. Soda. I don't know. I don't buy sugar drinks, so I don't know. Yeah. You um, know. Uh, but One of the tell. reasons they focus on the drinks more than they focus on other stuff is because the drinks happen to be a caffeine delivery system. No, I see. Along with a sugar delivery well, system. Well, not all the so, time. Not all the time. It depends on what what sugar-free drink, uh, what sugary drink you're, you're drinking. You could be drinking a ginger ale or you could be drinking a root beer or whatever, uh -huh. and there's no caffeine. Not all root beers are caffeine-free. No, but, I mean, all I'm saying is that, you know, that you're not, you know, I don't think that's the reason why. I think the reason well, why. Well, 35, 35 grams of caffeine in there, an there was no, soda. Uh, there, they didn't ban, they didn't Third charge level. it, put an extra tax on coffee in New York. That would if be they somebody. did, there'd be a revolution. Oh, yeah. They, you I bet saw. your life there'd be a Either revolution. Either that'd be one really Seven fat up. budget. Yeah. <laughs> Seven up. No caffeine. Never had it. No. Nope. Or how about just a flat tax on yeah. everything you buy? Yeah. Uh, well, no, that goes to Steve. What's his name? Steve. Steve Forbes. Forbes. Yeah. He had yeah. the right idea. It, you know what? If, so how many years ago was that? 1996. It would it, what would our lives look like if we had done flat taxes in '96? Right Probably now. better. Yeah. Well, I, I, I it would certainly be easier to do your taxes, and you wouldn't have to hire somebody to do it. Yep. You know, it's just here's the tax, send it yep. to us. <laughs> you know, I mean, yep. money every year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but there was so, some argument. So where's that, the negative? There, there was, now you seem skeptical. Well, there. The negative? The, no, it's there's coming I, I, from Steve Forbes. That's the negative for you guys. No, see. So, no, you're you're wrong about me, Phil. You know damn well I criticize both sides and I praise both sides where credit is due, or at least where I perceive where credit is due. So you do you, you don't you don't malign me. No, and but uh, uh, there Patrick, there there, there, are, there are some arguments personally. there are some arguments against the flat tax, but that it should just start at a certain point. So that yeah, anybody, say, under $15,000 a yeah. year gets to keep all their money. Refine okay. it. Yeah. Do whatever you have to do, but it needs to be implemented. Oh, anybody yeah. who makes less than $15,000 $15, a year doesn't have any money. 
So, you know, the, what are they keeping? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, that's it for Roger, tonight. Roger. Boy, I, the uh, two hours of contention that's been going on tonight has been amazing. Their dignity. Huh? Said so Joel was saying, if anybody who makes less than, 50, less than 15 grand doesn't have any money, so what are they keeping? And I was saying, their shirts and their dignity for a yeah. while. Anyway, uh, listen, we got to go here. Uh, uh, thank you, Phil, so very much. Yes, uh, tomorrow is Phil Free. Oh, good. Oh, everybody, the coast is clear. Call tomorrow night. You, call tomorrow night, Renee. Call tomorrow night, Renee. Call tomorrow night, Patrick. Call tomorrow night, Ray. Call tomorrow night, uh, Charlene. Uh, call tomorrow night, absolutely, Brian. And Anthony, you've got a call as well. Anyway, uh, thanks for, call, for being with us. Would everybody give a big, uh, kind of big uh, wave goodbye? To the folks out there in television land. Yeah, there they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, I'm going to uh, be relinquishing my, my job here as host of the program. There will be a new guy coming on here to host the program. And that will be, of course, uh, Jack Bishop with The Intersection. He's next over most of this same gab net. Uh, I'll see you, uh, let's see here, at 1 o'clock this morning, uh, it's uh, Intersection, uh, excuse me, Connections, and then tomorrow night at 9.30, it's Damian Chaplin and The Exchange. I'll be back again 10 o'clock tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>